Good morning, Math 8 students. Uh, Mr. Fischett, coming back at you. It's Thursday, March 19th, um, and we were talking about volume, right? Volume, and, and then I mentioned a little bit about, you know, surface area and different things. So today we're going to deal with prisms, right? So you look above, and there's there's different things um, that you have to be aware of when you're, when you're looking at a prism, right? So a prism, there are three-dimensional solids that have parallel polygons, bases that are identical and all other faces uh, are known as lateral faces and I'll talk a bit, little bit about that and it says that they're parallelograms so you know we'll talk a little bit about that in a second um, but as we look at this you know a common type of prism is a right rectangular prism or is what we call a box right so just some just some basic things we're going to take a look at this problem and then um to kind of run you through so we can look at formulas and different things. I know Mrs. Dombrowski and Mrs. McKeechick, um have been talking about volume, um, and you know I'm going to also try to add in a little bit of surface area as well. So first thing I want to show you is uh, this is actually uh, Mr. Frechette's Rubik's Cube. Um, so yes, and it is unsolved, so uh, I'm going to put it there. This is very similar to the object that you see here to the right. Um, this would be um, a prism. Um, it's a three-dimensional object, as you can see. Um, we can turn it all the way around, and you can see the different colors and different things. Now, if I put it face down, right, this top is a base, right? If I flip it over, that's also a base. So you have two bases on this object. Um, now, when we flip it to um, its side, so I'm going to put it to its side, you have lateral faces, right? So this is a lateral face. That's a lateral face that's a lateral face, and that's a lateral face. So you have two bases, right, and three lateral faces. Um, so, you know, when you're going through, messing around with it, so we can, we can kind of spin, so you can kind of see, right, so you have your, your, your bases, bottom and top, base, bottom, base, top, and then your lateral faces are all the things to the side. Right, so it's kind of hard to tell here when I'm putting it down like this. You're looking right down on a base, um, so that's a base. And what's on the bottom under here, which is on the on the paper itself, is a base. So um, I'll take my little funky Rubik's cube out of the way. Just I wanted to show you. Um, if we look at this this box right here, you're looking at different things. So it's hard to see the thing if we cannot rotate it. But we do have a base. This would be our base, right? That would be one base. And then on the bottom here, which is on, you know, if it was sitting on the table, our second base is underneath. So our second base is underneath, right? That's what's sitting down there. That's base two. Um, and in this case, you have lateral faces. So this is a lateral face. This is a lateral face. Um... Back here in the front, which we can't see, that's a lateral face. And over here on the side, which we can't see, that's a lateral face as well. Okay, so I'm just trying to get you an idea. So it's saying, you know, our first question is, well, what is the volume of, of, of this prism? Well, volume, we're dealing with three dimensions, right? And you can see that, right? You have a length, a width, and a height. So we have a height here, right? So here's our h, or our height. Here's our length. This is our height. And I'll write that below. And this is our width. So, you know, when you're dealing with prisms, whether they're right or whether it's just a rectangular prism, our volume formula is length times width times height. And that's what that means. It's multiplication. All of our, all of our variables are next to each other. Um, so if we're looking at the volume of this, all we're basically going to do is say volume equals length, okay, 12, right, times 8, times 5. Now with my volume over here, yep. And, you know, I'm going to get my calculator out. And we'll get our calculator out, and we'll uh, go through and calculate that. Like I said, we're dealing with three dimensions. Like you, you guys who are gamers out there, everything's in the three-dimensional world. Everything you see in front of you is the three-dimensional world. Um, so our volume of this box would be 480... Um, 
480 um, inches cubed. Okay, so that's our volume, right? Um, so that's easy. We talked a little bit about this. How many faces does this prism have? And, and what kind of shapes are they? Um, so faces are the lateral faces, right? So we counted here. So this would be one, right? This would be two. Back here that we can't see, that's number three. And over here, another one we can't see, that's number four. So you have four lateral faces, right? And what shape are they? Well, you have a 12 by five, right? So if I look at this, this would be five, this would be five, this would be 12, this would be 12. So there are, there are exactly four lateral faces, four lateral faces, and they are all um, rectangles. Okay, that's what they are. Easy enough, right? So the one thing that we have to look at here, um, and it's saying it in, in C, it's saying draw each of the distinct faces of the prism and label with dimensions below. Find the area of each. So now we're looking at, at surface area or area in general, right? So we're dealing with rectangles, even our bases. This is base number one. And underneath here, which we can't see, that's base number two. So I'm going to circle this. So what they mean by drawing this is, okay, so we have our bases, right? So I have two bases, and they're also a rectangle, right? And the bases are the same. So base um, number one plus base number two. Once we, once we figure out the area of this, and we know what our dimensions are. Our dimensions for the base are you know, same as here. So we have our width, so it's eight inches. So our width is going to be eight inches, but the length of the base is going to be 12. So we have an eight, 12, 12, eight. So that's also a rectangle, right? It kind of looks like a square, but it's not. And when you look at the dimensions itself, this is a rectangle, right? And I'll mark that up for you. So you have, we have a tick mark here. We have two tick marks here. That's telling us that those sides are congruent or equal. Um, now we have a different, um, we have a different shape that we need to look at. So now we have we have our lateral faces. We looked at our bases. Our lateral faces look a little bit like this. And that's why I'm going to draw them that way. And we know that those are a 5 by 12. And there's actually four, um, four of these, right? Because we counted four lateral faces. So we would have to do um, our lateral area or lateral face area, we could add them all up. Lateral face um, number one plus number two plus number three plus number four. Okay. So that's what's going to end up happening when we figure this out. Now, what is the area of uh, a rectangle, right? So area now we're dealing with, with the second dimension. Um, so area for a rectangle equals area equals uh, length times width. And I'll put my fancy cursive L in there. So area is going to equal length times width. So we have 12 times 8. So area equals 12 times 8. And I'm going to use my calculator like I did before. Um, so 12 times 8 equals 96. Now, that's 96 uh, inches squared. But we're not done yet. We have two bases we need to cover. So we don't have the total surface area. The total surface area for our bases is going to be 96 plus 96. So 96 plus 96, um, that's 192. So we have 192 um, inches squared. And that's just bases. This is just the bases. So that's why I'm going to circle that. So we're not done yet. Um, and then they want us to find the surface area of the entire thing. Um, so we're going to go over here. It's the same formula because we're dealing with a rectangle. Area equals length times width, and I put in my fancy uh, cursive L there. So we have 12 times 5, right? Area equals 12 times 5. You know off the top of your head, that would be 60. I'm going to still put that in there. That's 60. So that's 60. Looks like I went blank there for a second. That's 60. Um, 
60 inches uh, square. Now, we're not done yet. So we could add all these up. What I'm going to do to find the total is I'm going to multiply them. So 60 times 4. What is 60 times 4? 6 times 4 is, is 24. So that should be 240 um, inches square. So what is the total surface area? Well, what you need to do now is add both of them up. So our total surface area, our total surface area is going to be 240, right, plus 192. And our total surface area for, for this entire shape up here, or this entire box, would be 400 32 inches squared. That's our total surface area. Okay. Um, so it seems like a lot, um, but at the same time, these are pretty basic calculations. It's just it's just multiple steps. And see how I I I, I actually drew different things. You want to make sure you're drawing these. I mean, I'm a very visual learner. I like to see things. So drawing them is is great. And we actually answered the last question. What is the total surface area of this prism? Well, like we said before, it's 432 inches squared. All we did was is add up our surface area from our base one and base two and all four of our lateral faces. Um, so that's surface area in a nutshell. Surface area is the surface itself that you see on front of this. Don't confuse that with volume. Volume is the amount that this box could hold or what you could put in there and ship. Let's say you were shipping a, a present or something to an aunt or uncle in another state. Um, that's where all of this you know, comes into play. Um, so prisms. You know, some very interesting stuff with volume and surface area. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'll be, you know, chiming in on Google Classroom with Mrs. Dombrowski and Mrs. McKeechick. And, um, you know, keep learning. Keep doing the very best you can. You know, don't get overwhelmed with all the work that you're seeing from your classes. All of this is meant just to keep you sharp and, and ready when you come back to school, which is, you know, hopefully as soon as possible. Um, so everybody have a great day. You know, take some time with this. Um, you know, also have some fun, do some different things. Make sure you're hanging out with your family and spending time with them as well. Um, and uh, I'll be talking to you guys soon, okay? Bye.